What we're going to be doing today is implementing our own version of Git, starting from scratch. And we're going to do this in Java because I have Java installed and working, I hope. And we can just test that as the first thing by just making a hello world example. And main. Here we want the public static void main regular main method. And let's see, we want system out print line. Hello world. Like so. And let's see that we can actually compile this in the Java and if it works, run it as well. Good, so we have Java running at least. Now we can start implementing Git. We already have Git installed, so we can test. We want the Git that we make to actually uh, work with this Git. So we can just make sure right now we are not in a Git repository. The first thing we want to implement is git init. So git init actually initializes the repository for us to start working in. So let's make a function for that. Public, private static, uh, git init. Sure, let's just do like this. So because we only have one, one function, we can just call that immediately so that we don't have to worry about forgetting to call it. Git init is actually fairly simple. It creates uh, a few folders and one file. So we can start by doing that. We need, do we say new file? Is that how you create files? Dot create, create directory. We need Java doc. Java create folder. Yes. How do we do this in Java? Whatever. Uh, scanners, file path, make dear. Okay. So the first folder we need is the dot git folder. Git is very unique in that it only cares about what's on your physical hard drive. And so we don't, need, we don't need internet connection. We don't need anything fancy like that. We can just make the folder. And let's just test that this actually works and creates the folder. Currently, there is no folder. And if we run and compile the program, we get an error because we didn't import Java IO star. Should do it, I think. Yeah, and let's check now. The folder was created, good. Good, that's perfect. So we also need to create a few other folders. We need to create the .git folder, but we also need the objects folder. And we need the, uh, what's the other folder? Do we not need another folder? Maybe not. It doesn't seem like it. Uh, but we do need to create a file also. So we can do this by using, what's the file? Java file. Let's just get the Java doc. Accept all the cookies. Create a file. Yeah, we want to write to the file. Is there like, No, there is not. Okay. So how do we write a file? Do we just use a buffered writer? Uh, bar pv equals new buffered writer. Like this to a new file, I'm guessing. The file we need to write is git slash heads. This file actually contains what branch we're currently on. So it's, it's very important. 
we should then be able to say be the right and be the close. And this is gonna throw a bunch of exceptions. We'll deal with those afterwards. So what we need to write in this is the string ref refs slash heads slash master. And this just signifies pointing to the master branch. You can change this to anything that you'd like and then your initial branch would be called something else. Let's handle the exceptions. Uh, try this here and we need to catch catch some exceptions. We need probably the IO exception. If there's an IO exception, I mean, there's not gonna be one, so we'll just um, handle it later. This is this is gonna be like a minimal implementation, so we won't do anything that file writer, New file writer, <coughs> oops, like this. Then is that better? Okay. Let's, why actually is this not updating? ls, we have the dot git, ls dot git, it has the file. Oh, because git is obviously not visible in the directory because everything is assumed to be a directory. Let's see what's inside the git head file, the string that we put. So this is working at least, that's good. No exceptions, no nothing. Okay, great. This is perfect. So that was git init. Now, the next thing we want to do is to create uh, the functionality to actually commit something. It, if anyone can let me know if the audio is too loud or anything, that would be perfect. Otherwise, I'll just assume that it's good. Okay, let's start doing git commit. So now we have two commands, or we will in a minute. So in order to make sort of the switch, the characteristic way yeah. git passes its, its arguments is it takes them just as like as the second argument, right? So we need to implement something like that. So let's just make a function for it called parse argument. Or it could be select command. That's probably better. It needs to take the actual argument. Oops. Here. And then we need to figure out what to do with it. If it's in it, then We wanted to call the init function that we made. Otherwise, if it's commit, we wanted to call a commit function that we are about to make. Private void commit. No arguments needed yet. And to verify that this is working, we can just put in something up here and then try calling it uh, like we did before. Select command. It is lacking a return type. Yes, it's void. And we are also not calling it, which is also an issue. Like so. Commit is not static. It should be static. Oops. Let's look again. And it's printing the message that we wanted it to print. So that's cool. Okay. Now we need to implement commit. In order to implement commit, we need to understand the fundamental, the most important thing probably about Git. And it is the tree. The tree in Git is 
the objects folder that we created earlier, this one. This object folder contains everything that goes in Git almost. It doesn't contain branches, but pretty much everything else. All the commits, all the files, everything goes in this folder and we call it the tree. So for something to go into the tree, a few things have to happen. First of all, we have to hash the file. Second, we have to compress the file. I guess these happen, these happen in parallel, sort of. And then we have to also make a, a lot of pointers to things and update them. But these are the most important things. We need to both hash them and compress them. And so let's just uh, start, assume that we have just one file, right? We can do this by just naming the one file that we have currently. Okay, and so what we need to do to this file is we first need to get its content and we want to get the contents as a byte array. And that's because we need, because we're hashing it later, we need all of the bytes to line up just right. Otherwise it's not gonna work with Git. Oh, we forgot to do something. We forgot to check now that we're actually, we're not in a Git repository. We have the Git folder, not a Git repository, or the parent of a Git repository. What? We should be in a Git repository. Here's the thing, here's Git, here's head. Why is that not doing that? That's interesting. Uh, I'll just look over here at my notes if it says anything usable oh right 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 okay yeah let's just remove that we also need to create the this folder that we've just told it is going to exist right the heads folder so this one the refs slash heads can you do multiple folders at a time or do we need to split them out let's just be safe this should make the correct folders. Oh uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so it didn't complain. Let's validate that we are now in a Git repository, not a Git repository. Dot git, dot git slash objects. This seems completely fine to me. Why does it not think we are a git repository? Objects, git refs, git ref heads. And the file dot git slash head has the correct thing inside it. Right? That's interesting. Git status not inside a git repository. Wait, this doesn't have the folder that we just told it to create. Where, where is the new folder? These ones. Hmm. Let's just remove that. Let's try again. Oh, we're not, we're asking it to commit. We're not asking it to init. Ah, that is unfortunate. How does it feel now? Yes, we are in a Git repository on branch master. Good, okay, yeah. So we didn't, we didn't screw anything up. Okay, Git status, good. We just forgot to call it. Okay, let's look back at commit. So for the commit, we have our file hard coded. Now we need to get the bytes out as we talked about. 
content. How do we read bytes out of a file in Java? What's the most efficient way? Read bytes. File to byte array. That sounds exactly what we're needing. There is, uh, okay, IO utils. Read all bytes. This sounds perfect. Where is it? Can we do this? File to path. Oh, I guess this needs to be a file. Oh, I'm gonna keep hitting that, aren't I? Unintentionally. File the to path. Like so. Okay, let's let's just try and run it, see what happens. Oops, it didn't mean to init it. I need to run it. File does not exist because it's from the new IO, right? NIO. Let's see. Uh, new IO slash file. Like this. And it has an IO exception, which is to be expected. Try. Let's just pop, pop this inside here. We can also just throw the exception, I guess, because we don't want to handle them while we're just trying to get it to work. Throws, is it an IO exception? IO exception. Like this, and then if this one does, this one does, this one does. That also means we can technically remove it from up here. If we're not handling it anyway, I mean, might as well. Oh, right, I don't have automatic indentation. This one also throws them. Good. It didn't err. That's a good sign. So we could just print out something just to make sure we actually have some content in there. Let's see. We have 897 uh, bytes. That seems about right. Okay, so when we have the bytes out, we need to add to that some another byte array. So if we just say, we need to get the bytes from the string. This is the header, it's called. The header of a git file needs to be blob followed by a number, which is gonna be the content length, like that. And then followed by a zero terminator, like this. And we need to get this in bytes. So dot as bytes, is that a thing in Java? I think it should be. I hope it is. It is not. Two bytes? In bytes? Two bytes? No. Not two bytes. What is a good method for it? Get bytes. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, and that was the length of the constant. We could output the other one, nine bytes. Okay, so we need to get these two joined. And let me just check, do we need to add anything else to the thing? No, this is sufficient. So to join these two, we could just make a new byte array called full file, full content, content with header. Content with header, sounds good. Content with header. And that is a byte array of the content length plus the header length. Like this. We can then just copy over 
all of the all the bytes. So for int i equals zero, i less than header that length. Obviously, the header needs to go first. I plus plus, and the same for content length. Okay, so here we write to the content with header to position i equals header at position i. And down here, we need to add the header length and then the i is equal to the content i. So now we've joined the, all of the bytes from earlier and we have content with header. That's good. Content with header is what we need to actually compress. So to compress this, I'll just look up compress. We need to use gzip algorithm. Java gzip example. What is all of this doing? Seems like a lot of stuff. When in doubt, stack overflow. Isn't that how everyone does it? I think we can use just a deflator. Yeah, maybe this one. It's in Java IO. Java utils that zip. Let's see here. So this one we can construct with an output stream. And then we can write some bytes into it. Okay. So we need to give it an output stream, which then does it need to have a type? What type of output stream do we give it? Guess we'll find out. What if we don't give it an output? We have to give it an output stream. Okay. What if we just give it system that out? That's an output stream, right? Uh, bar zipper. And then we can give the zipper the bytes that we want it to write, which is the content with header, followed by the offset and the length. So the length is just everything. Like this. Great. Let's check out whether this is working. How do we do that? Well, it should probably write out to this one, right? Do we need to close the zipper? Uh, flush, 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 flush. Close, clone. It doesn't have any close, so maybe it's just fine. Oh, close right there. So zipper that close like so. Let's see if it writes a bunch of garbage. It did. That's good. That's great actually. It also didn't write this one which is weird. Okay, so we need this to go into into a variable I feel like. Right? Do we need to save this file? Yes, but we don't know what the file name is yet. So I guess we'll just have it as a byte array. How do we get a byte array output stream? Output, oh, output stream Java into variable. Into a string, right? Okay, output stream, string builder. Not quite what we want. New string to byte. Yeah, this is not. Oh, there's a byte array output stream. And then we can call methods on it. Okay. New byte array output stream. Let oh var compressed equals new byte array output stream. Compressed. Um, what does this one have methods of? Java, this one. 
let's go. Size, that's fine, two byte array. That sounds just about perfect. Compressed, two byte array. Bar. I guess this is actually the compressed. So we should call this something else. Compressed stream, maybe. Yeah, let's see. Nothing happened, great. Uh, we should probably output something, just to check that there is something in comp compressed length. 577, lots of bytes. So I'm comfortable with that, I think that's good. We all also need, that was the compress part. We also need to hash it. Let's look at how we can do that. We need to hash it with uh, an algorithm called shat one And I looked up beforehand that Java has something called the message digest. We get a message digest by using get instance algorithm. Yes. So let's just get message digest of get instance, and then the algorithm would be share one. It's the one Git uses, so we'll use the same one. Or digest equals message digest. What method do we have on this? We have reset, update, 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 digest. Boom. So that just gives us a byte array straight. Okay. So if we say digest dot digest and give it our, does it need to be the compressed file or the full file? No, just the full file. The content with header here, we get the hash as bytes, right? Maybe I should start writing some of these just because we don't have the luxury of very good highlighting in Visual Studio Code. Although otherwise an excellent editor. So let's print out the hash bytes length. Uh, down here. Uh, oh, we need to import it. Where is it in? Java security. Okay, let's just grab it. Import Java security dot everything. Can never get too many imports, right? No such algorithm must be caught. Okay. Well. I mean, share one is gonna be there. Let's just, let's just do this. This means, of course, that this now needs to be declared outside. A little bit annoyingly, but okay. Catch, no such algorithm exception, and do nothing. It's gonna be there. So we don't really bother handling it. We also need to indent this now. Let's try. What? Was that? Oh, that was from before. Uh, the variable might not have been initialized. I mean, I guess, but it will have 20 bytes. Okay, great. So the hash is a lot shorter, which makes sense. That's what a hash is there for. Okay, the next step is we need to convert this hash in bytes to hash, uh, a hex string. Cool, okay. Let's look at how to do 
that. Convert it to a hex string. So we have a bunch of bytes and we want it to be, a hex string is something, you know, that ranges from the regular characters and these characters basically is what we want it to be in instead. So we can calculate that by going through the bytes for in the hash for byte b in the hash bytes for each byte we need to do is we need to let's just store it in a string we need it to be a string anyway so for the byte b how do we convert that at one byte becomes one number right we have we have them so we'll select this the byte does this do anything let's just investigate here Uh, let's remove all this. Uh, okay. Does this have any effect? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to make it positive. So we do that like so. Then we also need to Add here zero x one hundred. How's the precedence? Probably need something right here. Very good. So here we can take advantage of the fact that integer has a method called to string, which will take a number and convert it to base sixteen which is hex, like so. Okay, these are, these seem large to me. Why are they large? Because we need only Oh, okay, yeah. So we added the 100, so we can, we just need the, can we remove this again? No, because we need it to be two bytes. Ah, yeah, 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 okay. So that one would be one, nine, three. Yeah, we need these to be at least two wide. So we'll just add this back and then we'll do a substring. And strip off the first one. Good. These are hexes. We can now add them to our result here. And we didn't print it. This, let's print our salt, see if we get a nice looking hash value. This looks like a hex. Yeah, yeah, it looks pretty good. So we have the hex string, which is great. Cool, 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 cool. When we have the hex string, we, we need to figure out the folder that the file, the compressed bytes that we made before, where they need to be stored. So, as I mentioned, git has this dot git and this dot object, which stores the tree. In order to try to sort of speed things up, git actually strips out the first two bytes of this hex string, or the first two characters, sorry, and splits it up there, and then the rest of it 
So the folder becomes 98 and the file becomes the rest of it. So we need to split it up at two. So we can do this by doing a string prefix folder. It's fine. Uh, result. This should be called something else than result hex string. Hex hash hash string. Because it is hash string. Dot substring. It's always zero and two. And the file then is always the hash string dot substring from two and forward. String string. String. Wow. That was not great. Let's do folder slash file just to check that we have it looking the way we want. Uh, we already have something called file. I will call it um, tree file. It's also a very bad now. Name. We'll call it objects file. Let's see. Oh, I was just about to say why did it why did it update? But of course it updated because we changed the file, and so yeah. Uh, the important thing is there. It doesn't seem there's anything overlapping between the two, so it does seem like it was split up properly. This hash is going to change all the time because we're changing the file that is actually hashing, so that's going to be a little bit confusing. I'll just grab a drink. How's everyone doing out there? Having a good day? juice. Okay, we have the folder, we have the file path. So now we need to write to it. Uh, what's the easiest way to write a byte array to a file? Because we had the files read all bytes. I wonder, I wonder if we have a files read all, write all bytes. Uh, we probably need this to be like a path as well. Path. Path was actually introduced after I stopped using Java as my primary programming language, I think. And we need to write the compressed bytes. Like so. Uh, and this needs to be a write. I guess let's see what it does. It complains. It cannot find write all bytes. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. I thought that would be really lucky. Let's look it up. Fine. Uh, we need more. Is this the new Java? Yes, okay. Write. No. Write. It just. Uh, it just it's just right okay cool and it already takes bytes so yeah, that is fine let's see what happens it did not like it no such file exception that is the point because we want you to create it oh right maybe it just writes to a an existing file we would want it to create the file Maybe we should look on the create, create, create file attributes. Oh, that's not really. Why does it not want to write to a file that doesn't exist? Exception or creating the file. Oh, we maybe need to create the directory first. Yeah. Okay. Oh, also. Oh, yeah. Okay. We also didn't. We didn't put it in the right place because this should be dot git slash objects because that's where the tree is stored. But we need to probably create this folder first. So let's do that. Dot make dear like this. Okay, let's see. It didn't like it. New file dot 
make deer. Didn't wasn't that what we did up here? New file dot make deer. Oh, not with a capital D. Because why would it be a capital D, right? Objects. We have something now. We have a file. We can't really look inside it because it's a binary file, but we have a file. That's very promising. Okay, having a file in the tree. Good, 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 good. Okay. Now what we need to do, I feel like we need to clean, clean this code up a bit before we continue too much further, because otherwise this is gonna get messy. So let's just uh, go back a step and start extracting some methods. And I like to start from the bottom usually. That seems nice. So convert to hex string, that seems like a perfectly natural thing to have as a method. Private void, uh, not void, it's gonna be a string. And it's gonna be called to hex string. Like this. Like so return the hash string here okay so that's the hex string it takes a hash as a byte array does it rely on anything else no otherwise it's fine good so all of this just becomes two hex string here with the hash bytes like so let's also extract actually hashing the thing so private static byte array to hash And what we're hashing is the content with header. So that's a byte array as well. And then we want to return this. Let's just... Uh, it's not gonna fail, okay? So we need to return something in this case down here. Uh, throw new... We know this is not going to happen, right? Because the algorithm is installed. Um, so we'll just make up uh, an exception for this. Call it uh, private static class static class uh, impossible uh, extends runtime except exception. Like this should be enough because then we can just say throw impossible and that's an, because it's a runtime exception we don't need to catch it or say throws to it we can just you know just do it we know it's not gonna fail that's fine let's see m did I not spell it correctly impossible private static class impossible extends runtime exception cannot find oh new right 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 good we need this digest then now it just becomes to hash with the argument uh, content with header here now we don't need this because it's, that's obviously what it's doing. We don't need this because that's obviously what it's doing. Compress, okay. Let's also extract the compress. If you didn't spot it already, I'm going for the comments that I wrote. I wrote them for planning, but now they're not helping me anymore. So they need to go. This also a byte array. And it's static as well. It's called compress. Seems like a good name for it. Okay, good. This should just be returned. 
We don't really need to expose anything else here. Yeah. You might need to actually... No, probably... Do we need to close it? We didn't even check that. By the way, output stream. Does it want us to close that? It does have one. Closing it has no effect. Okay. Then we won't care. I've never seen that before. It has no effect. Why is it there then? I mean, is it overriding something? I guess maybe it's overriding something in output stream. Okay, whatever. Uh, compress, we moved all that up. So compress now just becomes compress with content with header. Did we take that as an argument? We did not. We needed to. Byte array content with header. Okay, boom. Now this comment is also mute. Mute, mute, mute. Okay, it's getting shorter, that's good. So, appending the header is something we're also gonna be doing a lot. So I feel like we also actually want to extract this. Private static. By the way. Append, prepend header. That's a good name. And then we need to return this. Like so. We need to take the content, which is by the way, there. We also uh, need to take this one because at some point it is gonna start varying, although it doesn't quite yet. So we'll take the type as an argument. Plus the type. So it's the type plus the content length plus the zero byte, then get the bytes. And then we prepend that on top of this one. That seems good. So now we can take this and say content with header is now just prepend header on content and it is a blob like this. Good. This line is going to disappear because obviously we're not going to be just doing it with this one file. Uh, and reading the content, that seems fine. That's already just one line. So I'm happy with that. This is the process of oh, splitting the hash string in and then storing the file. I guess we could extract this too. Um, Yeah, okay. Private void, static void, store in tree, the tree, store in the tree. And we do that this way. We need to pass it the compressed content, which is a byte array. Oops. Which is a byte array. We need to start the hash string, which is a string. Uh, Java string is capital. That's it. So we can say these four are store and string with the uh, store and tree with the hash string and the compressed content. Like that. So this right here is actually the process for putting anything into the tree. We need to prepend the header, we need to compress it, we need to hash it, get the hex string, 
and store it in the tree. Those are the steps. So we can actually, uh, this is store the file in the tree, store, let's call it file in tree, because in fact, this whole, this whole process is to store something in the tree. So let's just make another method called store in tree. That will just do all of that for us, given a byte array with the content. With the content and also the type, which again is a string. So we can generalize this. Okay, that's good. So now we can just say, we've read the content of the file, so we can just say store in tree with the content. And this is a blob, because files are blobs. Good. Oh, we do need that when we store something, we are going to use the bytes again of the hash. So let's just return that. So this gives us the hash of storing that file in the tree. So we can find it again. We need to store references to the blobs in other places. Okay, great. Are my explanations making sense to anyone? Is it going too quickly, too slowly? Just right. I'll take the silence as a, it is perfect. And then I'll continue. Okay, the next thing we need to store is which files are included in the commit that we're currently making. We just have one file, but we want to generalize that at some point. Uh, and the way that we keep track of this in Git is we make a file that contains content like, uh, 100644 and then the f file name here oops followed by a zero byte and then the hash that we talked about before that's the reason we returned it because we need to put it in this sort of file so if we just make can we make this as a byte thing um Good question, actually. So let's make the parts separately. So the first thing is very easy to do as a string, 100644. If you're thinking that I'm just making up these numbers, you would be very close. I'll just open another testing Git repository that I have here. And then I'll just uh, show you how we can actually verify these things. If we say git show, we get the current commit. Uh, we're not gonna need all of it. We just, we're just looking for the first four or five of the commit ID. Then we can say git cat file insert uh, dash pretty print. And then we get this file, which is not what's important right now, but git cat file dash pretty print. This file, oops. This file is the one that we're currently making. You can see it has uh, all of the things I just uh, described. Oh, I guess this shows it in a weird manner. Uh, can I get the raw thing? I cannot. Oh, unfortunate. Well, it has those elements. They're in a different order here. I don't quite know why. I'm guessing it's not gonna be critical. Otherwise, we'll find out in a minute. Let's write the thing. Here, then we have the file name after space. The file name is, well, if we just pull it out of here, then it's going to be easier. Um, our file name. And then this is just the file name here. And then we need the zero byte. And then we need the hash to be appended to that. 
appending, we have it already in bytes and we're gonna co convert this to bytes. So I feel like we just should sort of append that. If we have the byte array output stream, could we just write bytes to that? I feel like we could, right? So this is gonna be the tree file. So a tree, in, in git, a blob is a file and a tree is a folder. And the commit contains the source folder is what we're gonna do now. So the tree dot append, append or write, let's just look it up. We have write and it takes bytes, that's fine. Yeah, okay, dot write. Does it, it appends them, right? It's gotta append them, what else would it do? Do we have like a two string? We have a, we have a two byte array, that's perfect. Um, so we write these bytes first, and then we write tree.write the bytes of the hash up there. Good, yeah, that's good. So we have the hash and the file in the tree. And once we have this, we can actually store this file in the tree as well. So we can get the var tree bytes. Oh, sorry. The tree bytes come from tree dot, was it two byte? Two byte array, two byte array. Like this. So now we have the tree bytes, and because we made the function earlier, we can actually just get our tree hash by calling store this file in tree. Uh, the content is tree bytes. And whereas the other thing was a blob, this then is a tree. Okay, uh, yeah. We may want to add sort of a function up here saying what files it's storing. System.out.println, just because it's nice to keep track of what files we're creating now and which ones are left over. Because this folder is gonna, you know, every time we test it, it's gonna create, currently it creates two files every time. Uh, creating, creating, and then we can also output the type actually, that would be nice. So we know if it's a blob or a commit or what it's doing. Flip. It doesn't work, cool. Um, store and tree, that's what it's called. Content, yeah, sure, type, yeah. What's it saying? Type up here is not good. This doesn't actually, wait, this doesn't know the type. That surprises me. Oh, okay, yeah, because it doesn't care. Well, we're not gonna print out the type then. We can survive. Okay, uh, hash bytes is incompatible. Hash bytes, yes, it is incompatible. Okay, what then do we have? Unsupported IO exception from where? The zipper. Zipper, zipper, zipper. Here. Okay. And also from the file right up here, down here, this one. And also throw an IO exception. Can this one also? Yes. Oh, it created two files. That's great, great news. Can we actually, so the same trick that we did up here when we actually deflated a file with 
cat file. We should be able to do that down here if you like. Git cat file to the file that we just created. Right? So dash pp. That file would be called c2 cb. Lo and behold, we've just used regular git to look inside the file we created, this one. And it contains the same sort of format that we're seeing up here. Right? It has the file at the end, it has the bytes and stuff, the blob. Okay, cool. That's super cool. That feels great. Great, 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 great. Okay, let's just move move right on. Well, move right on. Uh, the next thing we need, so now we have the file and possibly multiple files. We also have the tree stored. Now we need to also store the commit. And the commit has all of the metadata. So that file will look something like, it'll have first the tree followed by the hash. After the tree, it will have the author, which in our case, we're just gonna fake it. Author, including an email. Uh, I'm just gonna have to think how I'm gonna do, can I do a fake email? Fake email. No, I don't want a real email, are you crazy? No. That's definitely not what I want. Uh, at sign. That one. At a dot a. I think that's a fake email and a commit time. It just needs to be a number. It's a timestamp, really. We'll just put one. We'll also put committer. Needs to be there. Is it with O? No, committer. That's fine which can be a different person. And then the commit, a blank line and the commit message, which again, we're not gonna put because it's, we're doing the bare minimum, right? And the bare minimum actually, let's just remove this. The bare minimum is this. This is a legal commit because it refers to the tree, which is the folder, which contains all the files of the commit. So this should be enough. So if we just go back here and we say, we want to write this file. Um, should we do it with the new lines? Yeah, we need the new lines, right? So let's do the same thing we did right here, in fact. And let's just do, this is the commit, the actual commit file. When I realized these things first time, I was mind blown, this is, I think this is witchcraft. We have the tree followed by a space. Do we also have a null terminal? No, we do not. But we do have that. So let's just do this, then the hash, and then the new line. This is the hash of the tree. So it's a tree hash. Followed by a new line. And then on the next line, we did all of this. And then on the next line, we did the same, but with committer. One or two, t two M's, two T's. I did that wrong, right? Yeah. But that's why I was complaining. Cool. Yeah, this is actually enough. And so that means once we have all this, we can get the byte array out of this file. These are the commit bytes. And now this is gonna surprise you guys by now, I'm sure. We actually stored this one in the in the tree. As I said earlier, everything goes in the tree and get so many things. Stored in a tree. This though, though before we had the blob is the file, the tree is the folder. This one is just the type commit. So now we're writing three files if everything goes right. Oops. Yeah, great. Great, great, great. 
The last thing we need to do is we need, a, well, now we've actually committed it. I think we can even, I think we can even get show the commit, right? Because we have, this is a valid commit, CF, bogus commit object. It does not like us. No matter. Do we have some blank line issues? Uh, we may not want to end with a uh, blank line. No, it doesn't like us. Am I writing it? Oh, now it's BC. These change, of course, every time. No, it does not like it. Bogus commit object. Don't think we did anything wrong. Actually. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, it's me. So this is actually the hash, not as the bytes, but as the string, as opposed to the other times, which is super confusing. That is a gotcha. Three hex. So we have the two hex string of the tree hash, let var tree hash string. That is a gotcha. I, it's beyond me why they didn't stick, you know, a standard and then was consistent with it. So, up here we're using the hash as bytes, down here we're using it as a string, what, what, why even do you do this git? Okay, let's see, the last one would be 1b7d. No. Git cat file. Pretty print. What? Commit bytes. Why does this say tree? That's that's the issue right there. Okay, let's git show again. B zero six C. It thinks it's a commit. Like how amazing is this? Right? It's being like, yeah, this is a commit. This is the author. This is the date. One second past the time. Here's the file. It was a new file. I mean, this is amazing. This is just wonderful. We have made a manual commit. What does git status tell us? So git status can't see that this file is already in the system because we're not actually, like on the master branch, it's not actually there. So we can put it in the master branch. If we take, uh, we need the bytes from this. This is the hash, commit hash. And I'm pretty sure we also need that to be a string. Let's do that immediately. Okay, we've been going for a little over an hour. And we almost, we almost have, like Git, we already can make commits. How was it we wrote stuff to a file? We used files that write this one. Uh, how did we do with the heads file? We need to write a file that's very similar to heads. So let's just do it this way. Okay. So what we need to write is we need to write to the file git slash. And do you remember up here we set which branch we were on? here this one this is saying this is the branch we're on it's in ref slash head slash master and we already created this folder so we can just go in here and say well oh we had it right there well 
no, no, no matter. Here, we can just write to this the commit string like this and then close it. Let's see what that does. Git status. We have it here. That's awesome. We have it in version control now. Like we can say git log even. We have one commit and it's made by this silly thing. We have now manually committed this file to the master branch. So in fact, this is a self-committing program. In like an hour and 15 minutes, something like that. That, I mean, that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. What can we do with this? We can, so we already get locked. The master branch is pointing to the commit. Cool. Okay, let's think about what we can do with this. We have a few options. We can, one, try to do some testing for it. That is a very reasonable thing. We could also add functionality all over the place, like multiple files, right? This is all the program is in one file, so it is committing the entire program itself. But that is a bit of a hack, it feels like. So we can add functionality. It's also in a folder where there are, oh yeah, it's starting to generate folders, where there are two other files and we might, you know, not want those. So we could add git ignore and stuff like that. We could also uh, add usability by, you know, actually adding error messages that make makes sense instead of just saying whatever to the user and what else can we do with this we could refactor it we could make it a lot nicer actually I feel like these are the four options that we reasonably have does anyone have any preferences Anything we think would be cool. Well, oh, we could also optimize it, I guess. It's not very optimized. Voting starts now. Preferences. Come on, people. You gotta have some preferences. Just go in here on my second screen. Go away. We will do one of these. I'll just have to make a decision then. Oh, 
what about going in here? Okay. Wait, do I not have... Oh, down here. Okay, cool. The chat is right there. No messages. Too bad. Well, I'll just decide something then. We will do the refactoring, I think, first, because we have a bit of the we have a bit of repetition up here, you know. The tree thing, reads and writes. And we also have some things that make sense to do, like converting the he to hex and to not hex and stuff. We'll do a proper data structure for the hash, I feel like that's the first step. Let's do that. So, I like inner classes, especially for stuff like this when we're just prototyping. It's, whoops, it's fast and it's, it's very convenient. So let's make one for a hash. It should have a constructor. Building it like this also means that we have no need for, you know, access stuff. Because everything can be private and we can still see it, we're in the same file all along. Uh, we want this one. Okay, so the hash should take... What do we usually hash? We usually hash... Here. A byte array. So this should take a byte array. Which is the content. Or the source. And then what it does to it is we want to store it probably both as a hash, private uh, bytes as bytes, and also as string. And in fact, we probably want this to be immutable, so we can just do these final, oops, and if we have final private, uh, if we have final field variables, uh, there's no danger in making them public as long as they're immutable. And I'm not a hundred percent sure this is, but we'll just hope that it is. String at least is definitely immutable. Okay, so we know how to hash things. So we just say as bytes equals hash the content. And then as string is just to hex string with the as bytes. That should actually be it. Because, yeah, that should be it. Now we can move out this and start using it. So instead of calling to hash, we can say new hash with this. This is now a hash. And then the hash string, we don't need this one because we can just say hash dot as string. That should give it us. And down here, we can just say hash. There's no reason to actually pull out the bytes at this junction. Now, because this returns a hash, we need to go down and everywhere we have a tree or a store in tree, we need to update this. And that means we should have broken everywhere that uses it. This doesn't need to be that. It just needs to be commit hash dot else string. No need to call that. It's already built in. And the tree hash, no need to call that. So, we can just say as string be gone hex. Uh, this needs to actually be as bytes. Like that. Does it still work? Uh, there's one place it doesn't like it. Cannot find area on line 73. Is the function not called hash? To hash. 
close. Yeah, it's still working. Can we still get status? Yeah, it seems fine. The reason it's saying deleted up here is uh, that it's not in the stage. If you say git add main.java, it should be happier. Yeah, then it's just modified. Is it modified? I feel like this is identical to what's in the thing. What's the diff? Can we see the diff? Open file. Yeah, they are they are completely identical. Yeah, okay. I don't know why it's say, saying it's modified. That's sort of, oh. Okay. It's not too happy about that. We'll just run a git reset to get it out of the stage. So now it should say to be deleted again. It did not. Did we just change something? It's still working. Okay. Git status. Statua. Now it's actually in there. I wonder why it wasn't in there before. Why did it say deleted? Oh, it didn't say deleted. Oh, well, it said untracked. Then we added it. Now it's not untracked anymore. Okay, that's interesting to say the least. I guess it's not dangerous or anything. Okay, we have still, I felt like we had well, I mean, this is not really repetition because they're actually storing different things. I get, I guess actually we don't need all of this because this is just one long, one long byte sequence really. So instead of this here, we can just say plus with a new line probably. Here we can just say plus with a new line. All oh, right, it doesn't format anything for me. I need to do it myself. Then I will. Store this paren, is that paren dot two bytes. Like this. And do we have the right number of parens? We have too many. I expect it. Okay. Yes, like this. Let's align it a little bit. Well, I guess it should actually be aligned a lot further out. It should be aligned there, really. So the tree and the author and the commuter is on the same level. Oh, I promised to explain why there was both an author field and a committer field. So in Git, we can do things like rebasing where we actually, or I guess cherry picking is a simpler example. When you have two branches, you can actually pick one of the commits from one branch to another or from one place in history to another. And when we do that, we make a new commit but the original author of the commit should still say the same. So we store the actual author, the person who did the code in the author field and the person who moved the commit, let's say, in the committer. Okay. We're probably not gonna get to that now. Oh, now it's showing me what lines I've changed. That's so cool. Because it's thinking we're committing it. Okay, didn't think that. Uh, what's wrong? What's it complaining about? Was not two bytes? Get bytes. We committed it? 
Does the thing it's committed? It thinks it's modified. Oh, it says a lot of things. It says we have changes to be committed. So something is staged. Uh, let's just move it out of the stage, actually. I don't know why, why it's in there. Okay. So now it's saying that it's committed. It's clean. What if I place a space? This line is now modified. So if we do this, is it then not modified anymore? Hopefully. No, it doesn't think so. No, it's still modified. That's really interesting. And it's also still in the stage, even though we have committed it. Hmm, that's interesting. Very interesting. I guess we can actually delete what's in the objects folder. There's already a lot of stuff in here. Let's make, let's check that there's nothing. Right, there's no commits. Get status now. That has it actually both to be committed and not staged for commit. This is a, an extremely interesting way to view it. It's very unintuitive that it's both to be committed and not staged for commit. What can you do? It seems to be working. Git internals is it's quite interesting. Actually, we should be able to commit this to GitHub, I feel like. I think we should probably do that. So uh, I need a GitHub repository for it. Let's just call it my Git. Is it gonna do something weird? It might do something weird. Can I just create a GitHub re repo? GitHub.com. I'll just do it over here, not to expose all of my secret keys. Oh. Whoa. Right screen, right screen. Okay, good. Let's log into GitHub as we were trying to, to create a repo. Okay, uh, new repo. My git. Description, public, all of that is fine. Okay, can we now we can say git remote add this one, right? Copy. Uh, is that not how we do this? Git remote add options name origin. Okay, git push. Git push origin head. It rejected it. No, why did it reject it? The object. Unterminated header. Unterminated header. Error. Object. Zero, zero. G uh, zero, zero, DD. Is that one we wrote? 0, 0, dd, yeah, it's our commit thing. Uh, git uh, cat file dash pp 0, 0, dd. Does it think that's an unterminated header? Is it an unterminated header? 
It has three contaminated header. Do we need to terminate the head? Well, we are terminating the header, right? Because we automatically add the, the zero byte here. So every header should be terminated. Hmm. That's weird. Fail to push on terminated header. GitHub on terminated header. Mm, no. Uh, React, no. Git error in tag on terminated header. If this is quick to fix, we'll, we'll do it. If for some reason I can't figure it out, then we'll just move on. How can I fix this? Could be that this is buggy and I don't unbreak it. No message in the tag. Object, blah, 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 yeah, type commit. Hmm. I don't know why it's being... No, it doesn't seem easy. Okay, we'll just move on. It would have been cool to push it to GitHub, especially because, you know, we made the commit. And I wonder why it's saying that, because... I feel like everything else works and behaves nicely. So why is it? Well, no matter. Let's make this do multiple files. I feel like that's sort of the, oh, well, okay. We're in the middle of a refactoring, I see. So two hash is now only used inside of the hash object. So we can take this and move it in here. And we need to indent that and out then that. To hex string is actually also only used inside of there. So we'll move that one inside as well. Move in, move out. Uh, no, don't move out. Then I guess we can take this and move it into a separate file. Ha hash dot Java. Let's boom it in there. These need to now be moved out one. And then this is not static and it needs to be public. So now the visibility is starting to matter. Uh, this doesn't need to exist anymore. Like this, does it still work? We need to at least change that this now should include all of the Java files. The impossible, yeah, 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 yeah. The impossible, I feel like we should probably also move that to its own file because we want to use it multiple places. Impossible. Java public class extends good. Uh, it needs some imports. Yes. Which does it need? Message digest that was in security. And it's working again. Great. Great, great, great. Okay, is there some, uh, we, we can remove this one. Compressing, prepend header, store file and tree, store and tree. I think this is all, this is all good. Uh, we could extract these things. Right, couldn't we? Wouldn't it make sense? Uh, let's just continue and make the the f multiple files work first because I feel like this is going to be entangled with this after making that change. So we need to list 
the files in a directory. Uh, Java. List files in a directory. Great. We can use file after list. Okay. File print line. Path names. Var path names. What type is path names? What is file? Java file. List. It's a string array. Oh, we can actually get it as a list array. Hmm. That can even take a filter. That might be really nice. So we can do a new file of this directory dot list files like this. And then we can do path names. I guess that should just be called files. If we then do for each file in files, does that work? Can we do file.getName? Is it called something else? No, get name is fine. Okay, let's see what it says. Gives us all the files. Okay. So the dot git folder we definitely do not want to include. So let's do the filter that we could do. So we could pass this. Can this just take like a file? Is this how lambdas work? I feel like it should be. So it takes a file. And then says file dot file dot is dear directory is directory that one. So we'll take the files that are not directories. Cool. It didn't. It don't. Doesn't have the .git folder anymore. Okay, great, 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 great. So now we have the file names, but we actually already have them as files now. So what we need to do is we need to take the content and make them into hashes. This is file. This fits perfectly. Then we need to write them to the tree. So in fact, we need this thing to go up before we iterate through the files. These should go during and these should go after. Like so. Yeah, that's what I thought. This would get sort of tangled like that. Not that it matters, it's just, we, it's, good, it's a good thing we didn't extract it earlier. That would have, that would have caused trouble, I feel like. Now they should actually commit multiple files. Let's see. Boom, committed a lot of files. Let's git show. Uh, let's not git show, let's git... It's, this is super weird that this one is somehow in the index now. I don't know why. Uh, it says these are, this is untracked, these are untracked. Or this is modified, these are untracked. I don't know why, how it figures that stuff out. Git, cat file, uh, pretty print. Let's just view the tree file, which is cb0a. Oh, this is an issue. That is not good. That is definitely not good. 
where did we use the file name right there? So this should be file that get name instead. Good thing we looked. Git cat file cd 3d. Not a valid object. cd 3d. 9. Not a valid object. It says cd 3d 9. Not that one. Reveal and file explorer. Git objects. What's logs? What's index? Config or a cat. We didn't make any of that. CD, 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 3D. Not a valid object name. CD, 3D. Yeah, yeah, that's better. That's all the files. Even the files we're not using anymore. So now it thinks everything is untracked. It thinks everything's deleted. Great. Can we do the git push origin? Head. Origin does not. Oh, all right. We deleted the refs. Oh, all right, right, right. Uh, let's just see if we can add origin back. So close. So close. Ah, that's so unfortunate. Totally thought that would work for a second. Guess not. Okay. What's the next step? The next step, I guess, would be to implement git ignore because we kind of don't want the class files. All of these up here. These are kind of annoying, I feel like. So, or we could do commit message. Probably commit message is both easier and makes more sense. Nah, we'll do the we'll do the ignore file. Git commit. So what we need to do for that is we need to read a file that's called git ignore. We could read all. Why did we read files? We did that up here. Files. Did we do it up here? Did we do it down here? Read all bytes. I'm hoping this has a read all lines. Do we have it open still? Files. Let's go over here. Read all lines with a character set. What's a character set? Um, uh, what? This seems complicated. Let's just instead do... Uh, something else. So we'll just read it the old-fashioned way. Bar br new buffered reader. With new file reader with the file dot git ignore br read line um this i have done so many times i think i can do it by heart this not equals no then 
we have a line and then we say beard clothes. So for each line, which is now in S, for each line in the file, we want to store that so that we can check it. We can iterate through it even. Hmm. So we want it stored probably as an array list. Seems like the best thing. Var um, git ignore equals new array list with strings in it, which then are actually patterns. Are we gonna have to implement patterns ourselves? Or is there some sort of glob thing in Java? Java glob. Doing some glob. What can this do? Get path matcher. And does a path, what can we do with a path matcher? File system, get path matcher. And can the path matcher then do something cool? Path matcher, this matches. This is magic. Because then we actually want this to be path matchers. Then for every line, we just pass it the S. Then we push this to the getting on. Dot add. Git ignore. Does this actually, does this just work? No? We don't have Java utils. We can get Java utils. File not found. Yeah, we didn't make a git ignore. Uh, let's just start by condemning the class. Illegal argument. Is it because it ends in a break line? What, or a new line? What if we trim it? No. What if we print it? System it out to print line. Ah, it's because it's the empty line that's messing it up, maybe. No, it's this one. How is that illegal? A glob can be something on this form. Does it need to say glob? Surely not, right? It does need to say glob. Do we need to trim them? I wonder. We don't need the trim, okay. So we just need it to prepend the glob, okay. Um, we also want to add one of our own because if at some point we start supporting folders, it's quite important that we do not try to commit the .git folder. So I'm just simulating that it starts with the line that says .git. Now we can go down here, and currently we don't support folders, so oops, so this is fine, but we also now can say and. What are the methods on array list? Oops. Java, array list. Just give me the documentation, that's fine. We want to see if we can find the for all. No, okay, how about stream? Yeah, yeah. Tell me, does stream have an all? 
all match. Okay. Pretend whether all the elements match. So actually we'd like it to be not any of the globs. So it could be not and then any and then uh, git ignore dot stream dot any match. And then we get the, it's a predicate. So we get the matcher and then an arrow and then matcher dot match. Well, we could do an all actually, and then just do the not in there. All match not matcher dot match the file dot get name path we'll have to see oh it didn't like it uh, method match does it take a file how does this work this takes matches path to path File dot to path. Okay, still doesn't quite like us. No error, cannot find symbol. Matcher dot match. Um, matches. Dot matches. This is a very long line. Let's just break it up. Something happened. Let's git cat file pp0304. Hmm, it still did include these files. I've got to ask, I don't have any intention. Why are we trying to remake it? <laughs> Hi, Robert. That's a, that's a great question. Um, to get a deeper understanding of Git, right? To know how its internals are sort of working and get a feeling for if something really fucks up, it's really nice to have like this deep understanding of how to go in and, uh, and look at the files and de-scarify it. It also leads to a lot of nice explanations of why there are both a committer and an author. I always like if there's if there's something I need to understand really well, I I need to implement it myself. You know, I need to see what's behind it. And it's a fun little project that we can do in a few hours. I think it's fun at least. So it did still include all of the class files. Maybe matches doesn't do what I expect it to. Hmm. Does the glob path matcher? Finding file path matcher. Yeah, glob pattern. Yes, that's what we did. Star. That's exactly what we did. Oh, is it is it the trim that I, that's actually bothering us? No, this has just as many files. If we take the matcher, we can just try it out. System out print line. Been wondering because I've noticed some people live coding work on something personally important to them or do something seemingly weird. One guy reverse engineered a game. Just wondering why, yeah. I, I'm the type of guy who would re reverse engineer a game as well if, if I couldn't 
If I didn't know how to make it myself, I would totally do that. I love doing like one day projects that can give me some deeper understanding of something. Uh, we have the matcher. No, we don't have a matcher. We can get a matcher here for, well, just hot coated. Did I not do star? I did do star. That class. This should be the pattern. We get the pattern matches and then we'll just hot code the file. New file. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like an exercise. Like doing small projects like this is just such a great way to learn. I used to do them all the time. File, this could be main.class. So this I would hope prints true. So that matches. So get ignore all matches. This is not a directory and all of them do not match. Am I completely wrong? And not any of them match. That should be the same thing, right? Why is it not excluding the... List files, file. And not get ignore any matches to match your match of the file path. That seems that that seems like it should be solid to me. Not a directory and not any matches that matches it. Can I do braces here and then print stuff? Hoping I can if I just say return. Need that to go outside. Here, can I just print this? System, print line with an out. Um, let's print first the file dot path then let's or the name I get I guess is enough the path, we'll print the path also and then also whether this matcher matches the file to path that should be true if it's a class and then also whether this finds anything that matches. Now we're just printing everything. Printf debugging is the most solid way to go. Never fails. Okay, let's see. Here we have a class file. So it says class, this is a path. False. This pattern does not match this file. Is it due to the backslash dot? Why does this not match this file? And false, there are none of them matching. None of them matches anything in fact. Wow. That's interesting. You are a C C++ guy, right, Orup? So you can't spot what's going on, maybe. Hmm. Why does this not match this path?
Let's just look at the path matchers documentation. Matches path. Uh, it's actually a very compact thing. <laughs> um, path matcher. Matcher doesn't find, doesn't match. Expected. No. Match. Why doesn't this match? Try the. Whoa. Ugh. Oh. Files in current folder. Get default. Get path matcher. Path that get path. Okay. Not too interesting. Get file name. Get the full path. Definitely not what we want. Um, how would we express this? Star star dot class? No. Well, Yes. Yes, that is a way to express it. Why does this count as a folder though? Path matcher, current folder. When to use double star and when to cross it. Name count minus one. Matches a path that represents a file ending in .java. Yeah. But not if it's paths that get to absolute path dot normalize. What? That seems excessive, I gotta say. File dot the path is relative. You can say path that get based on the file that get name. I'm guessing. Oh, something was wrong. It's not called path that get. Path. Path. No constructors. Static methods. No. How do we get a path? There. Get path. Oh, that's long method. What did this guy do? Path. Paths. Balls. Still. Paths. Dot get file. Dot get name. <laughs> what if we don't give this any arguments? Still no, because the path still has this weird thing. So if we did this, then in theory it should work. It's just annoying having to do that. I feel like that's not the way it actually, the real git works. New file. Oh, it doesn't even, okay, it doesn't even allow that. We have to put the dot. What about nothing? Null. That's even worse. We don't need this up here. Main null pointer exception. Still? Still. Where? On line 68. Write the hash. 
Did we change anything now? No, it works. Oh, it's me. I'm blind. Yeah. Okay. It works. And it's it sorts out the files. Although we have to put a dot. So I guess what we could do is we could add to the glob dot slash. No. Dot forward slash. Yeah, dot forward slash works. Let's, let's just go out and delete the git folder entirely and run our java main in it. Java main main commit. Git status. Okay, it thinks they're all deleted, but they're all there. We still probably can't push it. Oh, we don't even have origin, so there's no chance. Pushing it. That's just the way it goes. Okay. Let's then look at, we have some means of git ignore. What else do we want to make? The git message. That is a good change to make. So maybe we should actually move this here down here now because we're going to need a, s a second argument. So if this is commit or init, if this is commit, then we're going to assume that the next argument is the message. And that means you need to quote it. Um, and up here, we just need to... It's actually going to be a really easy change, I think. Plus, dash n, plus commit message. Message. here. If we say git commit, this is the message. Git show. Uh, git log. No, that is not good enough. Do we need an extra blank line? Oh, we didn't compile it. Okay. Okay. That is my fault. Here. Oops. This is a message. And what are the errors? Did I? I don't just added it <laughs> randomly, I guess. Oh, it's so close. Oh, we don't use select command anymore, so we can get rid of it. Okay, git log. It does say this is a message. I think actually that works. Yeah, we have commit messages. Really nice. What else is there to add almost? We've gotten really far. I guess we got folders. I might be a little more involved. Uh, what else would make sense? We have a lot of static things. Static's really not all that good. When we're working in an object-oriented language, we should really use the objects rather than just have everything be static. Um, 
I guess what we could do is just improve the way we look up these commands by having them be actual objects instead. So instead of having this if down here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this be a hash map. Private static modes, commands, commands. It's just gonna be a hash map going from string to command. And that's gonna be new hash map string. We can do diamond operators, right? And then by doing this, we can say put, and then we can initialize it directly, which is sort of a trick, I'm hoping. In it, and that should be new in it command. We only have one init class, that's gonna be fine. Uh, yeah, let's just make the init class public class init. It has a constructor that's not too important, public, I guess. It's not gonna do anything for now, but what we are gonna have is an execute, which then R is gonna do something, because this should be the method that we wanna call. Throws IO exception. throws. I guess this is going to need some of the imports like these two. Okay. Now we can get rid of this because we've moved it into this class and what we can do is then go down here and say instead of passing them with this complicated if statement that we need to expand and expand, we can just say uh, command dot get art zero dot execute and now we should still be able to do in it oh th that's not where we do it we do it down here in it no because command is not a thing that's correct I forgot to create it and public interface command and this has the execute in it and then this actually implements command Uh, yeah, and it throws an exception. Where's the exception? There it is. That's not where it goes at all. And this then needs also to know that there is such a thing as the exception. Oh, it just, it just did it. So then we can also just put up here, commit. And then that leads to new commit. Which we then need to make. Commit is a command. It has a constructor, not that we're going to use it. And then we can take the commit function. And everything that only that function uses, which would be all of it, in fact. 
not command, commit. That one. Here. And this commit method we can then rename to execute. This doesn't need to be static, this doesn't need to be static, this doesn't need to be static. No need to static, no need for static. It does need to be called execute though. Did I re remember to rename that? Yeah. Now this takes a message and the other one does not. So probably we should make this one actually take the arguments in full. Just so we have the option to do stuff like this. Where the commit then the message is the argument one. Mm, yes. And then this takes the arguments. So now can we commit? with a different message. It needs all the imports. Um, this one we still need here for the hash map. But the rest of them we actually don't need in here anymore. But this one does need them. Let's see. Execute, cannot implement, and command. Why? Private, it can't be private. Uh, we're in the wrong um, file. Public. IO exception. We also need to throw the IO exception in here. We have a different commit message. So everything's still working. We eliminated the if. Now we can add new commands by just making a new file, which sort of isolates all of this and eliminated all the static. I really like that. I feel like this method is too long, I gotta say. So let's just break it up. Private. Uh, what does this part do? This actually writes the reference to the, to the branch. Write, um, write to branch, update branch. This sounds like we can do stuff with branches also, if we want. What does this need? This needs the, com the commit hash, which is a hash. So now we can update the branch. And we can call it with the commit hash. Okay, that's gone. What does all of this do? Tree hash. We're not using the commit bytes anywhere. Why do we still have all this? Okay. So yeah, this is just making the commit thing. It's actually just one call. So if we really wanted to do anything, we could extract this to its own method. I guess it takes, um, yeah, we could totally do that. Private uh, bytes, uh, what is it, commit? body no commit content 
because we've called it content everywhere else. It makes sense. And then that takes the message and the tree hash. Now I know what we could do. We could actually start doing, you know, a history where that evolves with with parent IDs. Because that's that's we're very nearly there already. So we'll just do that once I get this in a working state. Store in the tree, store in the tree, tree bytes. We don't actually use that more than once, we can just inline it. Um, this goes through the files and makes the tree. Okay, fair enough, we can extract that. Yeah. Private, um, this is just gonna return the tree hash. So this is make, make tree. Because it makes the tree. Yeah, yep, yep. Oops. Wait, do I not have. Why did it fold everything? That was odd. Uh, return the tree hash. And we don't need anything else from in here. Do we need to give it something? The git ignore. Needs the git ignore, which is an array list of path matchers. What else does it need? The files? No. Mm, that's it. Just needs the git ignore. Make tree with the git ignore. And that gives us the tree hash. And then, of course, we could do this thing should be extracted. That's just making the git ignore. Private uh, array list of path matchers. Um, make git ignore. Initialize git ignore. Whatever, it's just a name. And then this is what we want to return. So all of this becomes just that. Initial, get the message. Initialize the git ignore, make the tree based on the git ignore, store the commit content, and then update the branch. Does it work? Oops. Not quite. Is it not path matcher? Oh, sure it was. Yes, it is. Cannot find symbol path matcher. Make tree. Oh, this returns a hash. Just the one error. Path mat. Oh, I'm missing a C. Spelling is difficult. Whoa. Whoa, a lot of throws. IO exception is needed. No, not that one. Uh, probably this one. Close IO exception, read line. What has read lines? This one. Yeah. It's working again. Let's do the parent thing. That sounded fun. So to do the parent, 
we just need to actually read what's in the file that we're writing anyway. We're writing this file. So we could just get out the bytes and then put that as the parent. So down here, as the commit, we say files dot oh, the, the reading was not the easy part. Where did we read another file? Here. Yeah. So we can do the buffered reader of this file. Then br.readline. It's just gonna have one line and it's just gonna be the hex string. So we don't need any loop or anything. This line is gonna be the string um, commit hex parent hex. So here we can just add another line saying parent add the commit hex parent hex, sorry, excuse me, and then we should start with parent. So now the hi history once it's working, uh, yeah, now it throws the uh, exception. I feel like we should sort of handle those at some point. So now if we run the log, we actually have a parent. We can start making a history. We're making history. There it is, on top of the other ones. Still doesn't see that anything is in the store, but I mean, what does that matter when we can see it in the log? This is great. Okay. And I feel like this file is looking a lot nicer. Like a lot of relatively small functions. They're very cute. Maybe we should have done something that can read files conveniently so we didn't have to do this all the time without the character set that is. I guess if we actually extract it into like a file system, is that reserved? File utils, and then Java, uh, public class file utils and then just do file utils public that's fine whoops and here we could have like a read all lines so like a public string array read all lines with a file path, file name, file. It's all the same basically. And then that would just do what this thing is doing. But it would have like an array list. Lines equals new array list of strings. Bar s now string s while s equals br dot read line is not equal to zero or null. And then oops. Then lines dot add s and then we close it and then we return lines dot to array. Okay. 
and then that one can throw an exception. That can throw an exception. Okay, so now if we go into like commit here, if we assume that we actually take a file, file utils as argument up here, we can just store it in a variable like this. Oops. Go down here. Then now we can say file utils that read all lines. That read all all byte. Read read all lines. And then this would be string parent hex would be just the zeroth index of that one. Oops. Um, file utils. File utils throws IO exception. Oh, this one in here needs. The file utils probably need to know about files. What did it not want? File utils. Read all lines in the class cannot be accessed to the given types. I oh, didn't, we didn't give it the argument. This one, file name, in commit, in there. We're getting closer. Array list, yes, that's in utils. New commit, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And here, we now need to give this a new file utils. Import. Did I write utils with an S? Rookie mistake. To array. Wait, array list gives an object array that can't be right oh no 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 give me give me that one what does two array give what why why Okay. Okay. Well, string array. Well, we can just do var result equals new string array with lines dot size result. That is stupid but it does work you get us out and we still well it's still making commits even when it's not working good I think we've done like a good amount of work on this I feel like we've learned a lot and I like where we are.